Hello everybody, uh, this is a follow-up video for the one that I just did today and um, I understand that maybe I was a little insensitive to those that were still holding the stock. I'm sorry uh, if uh, I offended you, but uh, you know if you thought you were making money on this, you should have thought a little harder this was never about money this was this was a political statement a lot of people did make a lot of money uh, but that money came from the hedge funds okay and uh, well there you go so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to explain to you guys uh, what I do with the stock market you know when I'm not making political statements. This is just, it's not any kind of financial advice, but I want you to be aware of what is possible. Okay, now let's take a look at uh, a nice boring stock, medical properties. Okay, what do they do? They own real estate. They own specifically real uh, uh, offices that they rent to doctors. Okay, they don't have any employees. I mean, they have a management firm that goes in and cleans the, the, the building uh, every night and changes the toilet paper in the bathrooms. Okay, not a lot of overhead. So they mostly, they just count the money as it comes in. Okay, and they created this trust. So what, and you can invest in this trust. You can own a part of all these office buildings. Okay. And most of the income from that rent is paid back to the investors in the form of a dividend. Okay, so um, uh, what I have here is a spreadsheet that I created in about 15 minutes from information readily available on the internet. Okay, I look at the dividend history of this company along with the historical stock prices. Okay, and these stock prices reflect the stock prices that existed in the market on the day that this execution date took place. Now, let me explain these dates. Declare is the date they declared the dividend. Okay, in this example down here, they declared on uh, November 13th. That they were going to pay, uh, that they were going to pay 28 cents a share to anybody holding the stock on January 19th, and that they would get the check on February the 3rd, which just happens to be tomorrow. Okay, now these are just bogus numbers. Okay, uh, pay no attention to them. But let's just say hypothetically, <laughs> if someone owned 3,500 shares of the stock and, and they don't even have to own them now. They only needed to own them on January 19th. They could have bought them on January 18th and then sold them on the January 21st and they would still be entitled to this money. Okay, if you were to do that, that would be called dividend capture. Okay, that's just the way people make, you know, silly money. It's like finding coins on the ground. You know what I'm saying? You're not, you're not gonna make a lot, but it is fun. <laughs> Anyway, um, so you could expect a check for $980, okay? Now, you would expect one of those every quarter, so there'd be four checks like that in a year. Now, if you took the number of stocks and figured out what the market pro value was on the 19th, okay, and you uh, use that as the denominator over what the dividends were, you're going to get a percentage of how much uh, profit you got off of these dividends and what you'd come up with is 5.7 percent 5.7 percent just off of the dividends okay every year at least it has for the last five years uh, compare that to what you're getting on t-bills or your savings account but the stock also appreciates over time. Now, as you can see from the red, there's it goes up and it goes down. But I'm sure you guys have figured that out. Okay. But over, you got to look long term. Over the five years, this thing has appreciated. Now, uh, on this 13.6 this number, which is the annualized growth over five years, because there's some bad years and there's some good years. Okay. Um, 
that includes the 5.7% on the uh, uh, dividends. Okay, so if you had this stock over the last five years, you would have made 13.6% growth on your money, both from the dividends and the um, uh, appreciation in the stock price. Do you understand? You don't need to pay anybody on Wall Street to manage your money. You just need to stop being the prey, grow some fangs and some claws, and become a predator. And it's real easy. You're halfway there. Just understand this, okay? You make the money long term. It's fun to play, you know, on the sides with, you know, the little dips and, 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 and the bumps, okay? But if you're really serious about the stock market thing, you need to go long. You need to find stocks that, you know, are nice and boring, that return between 10 and 20%. Uh, on your money year after year okay and you need to hold them long and you're going to make 10 to 20 percent on your savings every year and you don't have to do anything but just look at it once a quarter to make sure you know somebody's ceo didn't freaking run off to the bahamas with all the money i mean you have to pay attention don't get me wrong but what i'm saying is is just invest a little bit in figuring out how this stuff works and you don't have to uh you know you you can become one of the one of the lords and not be a serf for the rest of your life anyway that's all i got to say i hope uh, somebody profited by that if you'd like to see me share some other of my spreadsheets i could share one a week i'll give you one a week because this is kind of what i do as a hobby <laughs> i go and i look for boring companies but this is not advice in any way it's just me sharing you with you my hobby anyway talk to you later bye